Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be going into a new program. This is uh, Codility. Uh, I just recently found this. Um, I was programming, I was, and uh, so we're going to get onto this one. So this one's called Binary Gap. So we'll start this. Uh, it shows that I've done it because I did it in Ruby a little bit ago. But uh, we're going to do everything in JavaScript on this channel as, uh, because that's the way we started. And so you want to first confirm your language here. And so here they're saying a binary gap within a positive integer n is any maximal sequence of consecutive zeros that is surrounded by one at both ends in the binary representation of n. For example, number nine has a binary representation of one zero zero one. Okay, so nine has a binary representation of one zero zero one, and it contains a gap of, of two because there's two zeros here. The number five hundred twenty nine has a binary representation of this guy, and that so there's two gaps two binary gaps, one of length four and one of length three. The number 20 has a binary gap of uh, just zero here because it only has a length of one. Even though there's two zeros, the binary gap must be held within two ones, within ones. Uh, so the number 15 has a binary representation. Uh, the number 15 has a binary representation of all ones and has no binary gaps. The uh, number 32 has a binary representation of basically one zero 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 and has no binary gaps because there's no uh, there's no zeros within ones so we want to write a function that given a positive integer of n returns the length of its longest binary gap the function should return zero if n doesn't contain a binary gap for example n is equal to n at one zero four one the function should return five because n has a binary representation of this guy and you can see that there's a gap of three and then there's a gap of five and so the re we want to return five um, given n is equal to 32 the function should return zero because n has binary representation of no no binary gaps there and thus has no binary gap so we want to write an efficient algorithm for the following assumption um, so it's it's just that's that's the assumption so in here we want to write our javascript um, so yeah, they're just telling us what they're, what it is there. They're telling us we can use console.log, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the th the I did this earlier in Ruby. Um, so yeah, I'm going to open up my terminal, and then I typed in node. That gives me this what's called a reply evaluate print loop um, system, so we can do JavaScript in here. And so I like to do as much as I can here. Um, so yeah, we're going to, for example, 9 has a binary representation of... One zero zero one. So nine, and I think what you do is character. Uh, what is it? Okay, so that's what we want to um, JavaScript convert integer into binary string. Convert a decimal to a. How do I convert an integer? Okay, so you can see I've already looked this up a little bit. Um, so here they have two string. And then with a, they pass in a parameter of two. So we, we haven't been doing that a lot. So if I go back to node and I say uh, nine, well, if we go to string, it says it doesn't work, right? Because it's an integer. But I wonder if we could do it that way. Okay, so it's not working. So, but if we go nine to string, that works. But it's a string to string, so that doesn't make any sense. But what if we pass in a two? Okay, so it's just not working at all. How do we convert it? Um, decimal into string, two string two, a number dot two string of two. Oh, maybe I'm just passing it incorrectly. So number, number dot to string, and then we pass two. Uh, it's a string. Nope, that doesn't work either. Output is negative one. Two string, output. We want to figure out how to get character codes, though. So this isn't even giving us the right one. I wonder if we need to be like nine dot to string two. Okay, that's it. So this is how we do it. So now we're getting a string of binary digits. So that's what we want to pull into here. So now that I've got it in the REPL, I can pull that back over to Codility, and we want to say our uh, our binary. Uh, our binary uh, group and we're gonna make that a variable so we need to say let binary group and we're gonna say so we're gonna pass instead of just having it there we're gonna pass it into here so now and now we, we have is a binary string and so now if we were to console.log our binary group 
and then I like to just put um, a string in there. If we ran the tests now, we should be printing out that. So you can see here, we've got it. So this is the string that we're working through. So now what we want to do is be able to calculate this. Um, I want to round a bunch, like this one we want to have, we want the result to be uh, zero, um, but it's a thousand, right? Um, right now, that's what we're returning. So what we want to do, what I want to do is I'm just going to do some reg regular expression stuff to this. Uh, basically, we can get rid of anything that doesn't have zero. So if we just trim off the front and the back zeros, let me explain this. Let's see. I'm going to get a test case, a binary gap. Um, let's get let's get an example like this one. This one we want to have an, an a result of um, yeah. So the number twenty. So twenty has this as a binary representation. So twenty. Uh, let's just call this uh, S for now. So S. Now what I want to do is I want to ignore any zeros at the beginning or at the end. Well, actually, if we make it like this, this will actually give us a proper test case. So this isn't actually s i'm just saving it as a string so what we want to do here is we want to be able to clip off the beginning and the end so um we can say yeah how can we how do we trim javascript trim trim uh elements off string so trim left trimming strings in javascript trim left so here he says trim left string is hello world trim left that just prints out hello world hmm. trim left string dot prototype is string is trim left a, so s dot trim left and then i wonder if we pass in a string of zero will that get us there um let's see one two three one two three no, that didn't do anything. The character list. Shroom. Um, okay, so maybe we could do some sort of a JavaScript thing, like s dot uh, replace. Um, yeah. Place. And what, what do we want to replace? We want to replace, we're going to use a regular expression and replace it with empty. And what do we want in the regular expression? We want to say, um, we want to replace zeros with that. What does that do? Okay, so we want not just zero, we want to have it be zero plus. Okay, so now we're trimming off the front. And now if you remember, there's the caret thing too. So we want to make sure that we only trim, trim off the first ones. Cool. Now, that's our original string, but we can pass it in there. Now, that's not good enough, though, because what we want to do is also do the same thing to the front. So one thing that we do that I think is kind of um, ridiculous, but we can just reverse it, right? And then uh, replace reverse. String dot replace. So this takes care of the beginning. And I wonder what happens if we go one, zero. Like here, this is an example. I'm gonna give you an example here where we're gonna go replace and do the same thing with the caret. But what we want to, if we're, if this is gonna work, this uh, replace function is not actually going to occur. Cool, so that stays the same. So we can do that. So we can go, um, yeah, we've got it there. Uh, cool, so s dot replace like that, and then dot reverse. Uh, reverse string in JavaScript. Three ways to reverse a string in JavaScript. Uh, reverse string, return string, reverse string, hello. Oh my gosh, they're really just gonna split it into an array and reverse it. String dot split dot reverse dot join. Oh wow. Well, 
you know what it doesn't really matter we should be able to do it that way so let's go back over here let's go back to our node REPL um, so instead of reverse reverse is an array and we're trying to do it to a string so what we need to do is go dot split and we're gonna split it based on that and then dot reverse and then dot join and then we join it together dot reverse dot replace Oh, maybe joint. Yeah, it's join. Okay, cool. So now we've reversed the string. So we went from here to there. And then we can just call the replace function again on it. I hope this is making sense. And then we have a group of zeros and ones. So yeah, this is the way that we can kind of trim. Um, so I'm just going to make this into a separate one. Uh, trim zeros. Trim non and closed zeros uh, string okay so I'm adding this to a separate function str and we want to return this so now if we were to now what we want to do we can set this to our uh, trimmed string so our binary group is here uh, first we uh, once we get the binary group so that's the binary string we the trim the trim uh, non enclosed zeros so the binary group binary group and we're gonna set this to trimmed group okay so now what happens if we console log the trimmed group we run the tests we see str str that was a typo. Okay, so now we're, we're um, printing out our trimmed group, and it looks like it's working. Trim group, trim group. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one. Now, what we want to do is go through with each one. Um, so let's say that we have that... Uh, let's say that we have this string. So I'm going to go back to node. Um, this is our string, and we want to find out how many zeros. So one, two, three zeros, and then one, two, three, four, five zeros. So, um, well, what we could do here is we could say dot split by, now that we know that our trim is taken care of, we can split it by the one. And I think we need to make this a string, yeah. Cool, so now we have groups of these, right? So now we have an array of the of the groups of zeros which is great that's exactly what we want um yeah is that the best way to do this okay cool and then we could just iterate through and count the length so is this we'll have set a maximum length of z variable to zero and then we'll go through it's like zero is greater than or equal to zero uh maybe it, it just it doesn't change the next one it would go to is the length of this string three greater than or equal to zero yes it is so we save this as our largest one and then our next one is so we're going to go to here and our largest value is saved to three and it's like one two three four five is three uh, greater than five no so our largest number is saved to five and then we return five hopefully that makes sense so we're going to say our trim group um, you know yeah we could actually just do that here we could go dot split by um, split the ones and then we just have our trimmed group and then we can just go through and just say uh, trim group uh, for let i equals zero i is less than trimmed group dot length i is plus equal to one and there you go Okay, so with this one, we're iterating through. And now finally, we want to say let uh, largest group of zeros is equal to zero. So we save this as zero. And now what we say is um, if uh, we have our individual group, right? So we could say uh, let individual, individual group equal trimmed group at position i. So now we're going to go be going through. So in this example, that'll be like first here is, is our individual group. And then when, on our next iteration, this will be our individual group. And this will be our individual group. 
So our individual group, if our individual group dot length is greater than our largest group of zeros, then we want to make our largest groups of zeros equal to our individual group. And you know what we should do is instead of saying it here, we can just say let the individual group um, length size. So our trimmed group dot length. Our trim group dot length is going to be equal to that. So in the first one, it's going to be zero, then it's going to be three. Individual group size. So if our individual group size is greater than the largest group of zeros, then we want to set our largest group of zeros equal to our individual group size because we're recording the highest one that we found. And then, uh, yeah, I think we can console log here. We could say the largest group of zeros here and here. If we were to run the tests here, it's not going to pass now, but we can see that uh, they're just giving us this invalid result. But our result here, we printed out five. Um, and so for 1041, I think they have it up here, right? 1041. 10441, it should return five. So we're getting the right answer. So now what we need to do is just have our, so our function returns. Currently, our function uh, does not return. So uh, instead of having it console log like this, we can just uh, return it. Run the tests. Cool, it looks like they passed. Um, awesome. So I'm going to submit this test and see what happens. It uh, looks like we've got a little bit of extra time. Uh, I did do this one in Ruby a few days ago, or a few hours ago. Okay, cool. So now our solution passed our initial one. Train is ended. You will be redirected to preview an evaluation report. All right. Correctnix performance was not assessed. Now, my guess is that it's not very um, rapid because there's probably faster ways of doing it. But um, yeah, this is kind of the cool thing about Quotility is they'll kind of give you a breakdown on where you were. They had these auto fail, auto solutions here. So if you, when we ran the test here, it shows us what, how we were doing it and you kind of remember how it goes. Um, yeah, and so you can see the progress of your of your development. And that's pretty cool. And that's why I think I'm going to try to do a few of these Codility videos because algorithms is not my strong suit. And for some reason, tech companies all want you to be able to play these ridiculous uh, games. Um, so yeah, let's see. Here they have the correctness test. Cool. It looks like we're pretty confident on our response. We always get the right answers. This just tells you the same thing. Time used, effective time. Nice. And then feedback. Binary gap. Cool. So yeah, that's the first one. Um, let's check out the Codility training. Looks like uh, we're back in it. So now we can go back to lessons and start on our next one. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next lesson.